AI Weekly Breakthroughs. Welcome to another episode. It's a show where we explore all the key happenings from the AI world to see what really matters. And even though it was the week of 4th of July, AI does not have holidays. AI does not sleep. So we have a lot of great announcements. I want to start with World Artificial Intelligence Conference. And it happened last week, 2024 edition. It happened in Shanghai. And I want to share three key announcements. There are a lot of different news coming. There are a lot of industry breakthroughs, but these are the three key ones. And they are all related to large language model development. So first two are from SenseTime. So it's a company that is, that is investing heavily into developing their own large language models. The first one is SenseNova 5.5. It is their latest foundational model. It improves the previous version by 30%. And it also surpasses GPT-40 in five out of the eight key open compass metrics open compass being the llm evaluation benchmark and then the second one also from sense time is sense nova 5.0 oh, and why this one is interesting it is a real-time multimodal model capable of processing audio text image and video and what is interesting about these models from sense time they are mostly trained on synthetic data sets so this is something that we talked about uh, the previous week how research is pushing this field forward but synthetic data generation is very valuable and with SenseNova models we see this put to production and then the last one is also a new model from iFlyTech SparkDesk version 4 and this one outperforms GPT-4 Turbo in text generation language comprehension knowledge Q&A logical reasoning and math ability so what this shows is that Models coming out of China from that region are, are, are very high performing and they are comparable to, let's say, the highest performing models or best models from OpenAI. Next item from Anthropic, they've been very active in the past few weeks, and it is an initiative for developing third-party model evaluations. Evaluating models, assessing model outputs is very hard. Benchmarking is very hard. So what they're doing now is they will fund evaluations that can effectively measure advanced capabilities in AI models. And they have three key areas of focus with this, AI safety level assessment, advanced capability and safety metrics, infrastructure tools and methods for developing evaluations. And I do want to explore those three key focus areas one level deeper because I think it gives great insight into what these small developers, small building companies are thinking about. What are some of the key issues they want to address in the near future? So with AI safety level, assessment, cybersecurity, chemical, biological, radiological, and nuclear risks, model autonomy, how well can models perform tasks autonomously, national security risks, social, social manipulations, misalignment risks. So those are all coming up with these different, different use cases that are built using generative AI. Advanced capability and safety metrics, advanced science, so how these models can, can improve scientific research, speed up scientific research, harmfulness and refusals, how likely these models are to generate harmful responses or refuse to generate responses, improved multilingual evaluations, societal impacts. And then last group here is infrastructure tools and methods for developing evaluations, templates, no code evaluation development platforms enabling subject matter experts to create these evaluation benchmarks without having coding skills. So this is something very important. Evaluations for model grading. So how well can models assess model output? So this automatic model output assessment. And then lastly, uplift trials. So comparing how well can a task be accomplished using AI or not using AI. So usually using two groups, one has access to the model and one does not, and to see how much it actually Im improves the effectiveness. Continuing with Meta, so Meta makes an appearance this week, Meta 3D generation, and it is a state-of-the-art pipeline for text-to-3D generation, and it can generate 3D assets based on text inputs, and it does that with a high, high prompt fidelity, meaning it can follow very specific instructions, it's fast, it can generate creations in under a minute, and it's actually a combination of two foundation models, text-to-3D and text-to-texture, but let's look at what creations of this pipeline actually look like. So we see these different objects, 3D assets being generated, and we can see the texture quality is very high. Even the light reflects differently based on the direction from which we are viewing the object. Here's another example, a pug, a 3D item. Text prompt here was a pug made out of metal. And then what we will also be able to see is how this can then be used because this is 
very rich information about the object, how this can then be used to animate this 3D asset with additional solutions. And we see, we see how this can be applied for different use cases in the industry. Now, this is from Meta's research. And here are some more examples of how these objects, so you can have these very creative inputs and see very good, quite precise outputs. Continuing with perplexity, so it's a tool for, for searching, for, for, for creating research, and they're now bringing out Pro Search. It is a upgraded version for advanced problem solving. And let's look at some of the key capabilities of Pro Search. First one is multi-step reasoning. So now this tool will be able to assess whether your question, your instruction requires multi-step reasoning to solve the problem or to answer your to answer your question. So when questions require planning, step-by-step -step reasoning, and synthesizing in-depth answers. And on the right, we can see an example of such a request. I want to see the Northern Lights. When is the best time to go? And what are the top viewing locations? in Iceland or Finland. And what the solution does is it breaks this problem down into two subtasks. First, finding the best time of the year to see Northern Lights and then identifying the top viewing location. And then the second key capability is advanced math and programming, improved code execution for data analysis, debugging, and content creation. And on the right, we see another example of a problem being solved by Pro search solving the night dialer problem. So this is a problem that uh, probably most programmers will be familiar with, but the solution breaks it down into four sub-steps, search for information about the problem, understand the rules and constraints, search for algorithms or approaches that can solve it, and lastly, actually implementing a solution. So this is a very impressive for perplexity, which is a tool that is definitely gaining, gaining traction. QTI, it's a French AI lab. It received a, 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 a large funding of 300 million and they unveil Moshi. And what is, what is, what is Moshi? It is a real-time multimodal conversational AI companion. So you can talk to it and it, it will talk back to you. And it is a fully open source project, meaning that developers can use this as a baseline to develop their own, their, their own chatbots. But why is this interesting? Why is this being featured? GPT-40 has similar capabilities. What they're really trying to elevate here is AI conversational experience similar to as if you were talking to a human. So it, it responds pretty much instantly and it does not only understand literal meaning of what you are saying, but it can also capture the emotions and nuances of what you are talking about or how you are talking about this thing. And then it will use this as input to generate responses accordingly. And then it is available to anyone to try out. So you can try it out today to see how it actually performs. Now, they are very clear that this is experimental and that usually means that it makes mistakes. It does make mistakes, but still very impressive to see. And again, being open source, it can push forward how we approach uh, chatbot creation. And then last item for today, AI image generation. And top line, we see original images. And then bottom two lines or two, two rows below, we see AI generated images. And then here's another example. We have a praying mantis food. And now you might say, this is not looking that good. This is, uh, this is way worse than let's say stable diffusion, way worse than, than perhaps Dolly can do. But what if I told you that this was generated only using AI and brain activity recordings of volunteers who viewed the original image? Because this is exactly what scientists from the Radboud University in Netherlands did. So they used AI and brain activity recordings to reconstruct images that were shown to volunteers. So again, top line is the original image. And they, they conducted two different studies. First one was using fMRI, which measured changes in blood flow in the brain. And then the second one using electrode arrays to record brain activity of macaque monkeys. And this is then the output. So what they have managed to do is or produce or train mind reading AI. So mind reading AI is here or is coming very soon. So this is very impressive. And this is also the last item for today. Thank you and until next week.